please. Um, okay. Um, I had sent out, um, I hope the, everybody's energy is good because you all had food. Um, we had sent out uh, three quizzes to you and those are personality check quizzes. The links were in the chat here and also in the chat on Slack. Um, those would be required by our wonderful three speakers that are going to take uh, the next session, which is Total Brain Coaching and Total Brain Coaching by Ted Wallace, Sherman and Dr. Wallace together. Um, let me get to here to introduce the coaches. So uh, Ted is currently an agile coach. He has completed Master of Science degrees in Computer Science and Physiology two different subjects. I don't know how he pulled together. He is a registered corporate coach with thousands of hours of coaching sessions. His talented wife, Danielle, is from Netherlands. They have three amazing children, Jace, Kyron, and Micah. And um, I'll tell you, Ted has such a peaceful look on his face. Uh, he has embodied that Zen look you would enjoy uh, with him. Um, the next uh, person that is going to be supporting him is Sherman. Sherman is an agile coach and trainer. He has been an excellent executive and director, senior management person, and uh, has over two decades of experience, which he uses in leveraging to help world-class organization fulfill their mission of growth and profitability. Um, we would also be graced by very respected Dr. Wallace, who is Ted's father, and he has conducted pioneering research on transcendental meditation techniques. His sem uh, seminal papers in science, American Journal of Psychology, Physiology, and Scientific American support a new paradigm of mind body medicine. Happens to be, I am taking a mind body uh, medicine class, which I just started the uh, day before yesterday. It's a wonderful thing, uh, which is good for uh, getting you all aligned. So Dr. Wallace has given numerous lectures on the neurophysiology of enlightenment and integrative medicine with particular interest in research on transcendental meditation and Maharshi Ayurveda. We welcome Ted, Sherman and Dr. Wallace onto the podium. Thank you so much, CK. Deeply appreciate that beautiful introduction. Uh, so I am uh, doing this with my father, Dr. Wallace, and Sherman's helping us with one of the games, uh, the virtual scavenger hunts. So I deeply appreciate. There's so much to share, and already the day has provided so much. So deeply appreciating that. Um, I'm just going to show the slides real quick. So I'll share my screen. And tell me when you guys are seeing this. Yes, we can see it. I'll start from the first slide. So total brain coaching, we'll go into the agenda of it. So first, um, we can't do introductions, all of us. So if you would on the chat, just put your name, profession, and any unusual habit that you might have or any habit that you want to share with people. Um, we are going to be using the, the kind of the theme of this conference is games, and we're using two games to enhance the learning. Um, one is a virtual bingo, which I'll show quickly in a little bit. And then there's also a, a virtual scavenger hunt, which Sherman will do kind of midway through the talk. And we'll talk about what is uh, total brain coaching, and then we'll do any questions and answers. So uh, the first this virtual bingo link there's going to be four bingo links that are in your in the chat and in slack i think it'll be um and you'll get a virtual bingo card and i'll show you quickly what that looks like if you can see me you'll sh should have a card like this and there'll be words in from our presentation um and when you hear one of those words like coach you'll click on it and that'll give you an x and if you get uh, either down or across or um, at a diagonal, then you got bingo. Now, normally you would shout out bingo. Um, on this presentation, if you can just type it out in the uh, chat and then with your email address, and we will send you copies of the two books that 
uh, we just published, and that's kind of the center point of the presentation. Um, so coherence code and total brain coaching. So I'm hoping everybody has that and is able to play along. I'm gonna go back to the presentation. And go back to the current slide. So why did we create total brain coaching? Uh, my, my work has been in the agile field for the last couple of years. Um, and I've been kind of leading an agile transformation at the previous company I was at. Uh, and it's hard. It's not that easy, actually. And I was trying to think, why is this so hard? Why don't people just understand and move into this better style of working, this more effective style of working? Uh, and a lot of it comes down to people's behavior and habits. It's actually very difficult to um, change people's habits. And so I also had a, a background in neurophysiology and I had a father who uh, was head of that department. And so we started talking about why is this so hard? And we started thinking about how can we help uh, people change habits? How can we help people move from older systems of thinking to newer systems of thinking. And that's how we got uh, Total Brain Coaching. So we're gonna talk about what are habits, how do we change habits, and what is Total Brain Coaching. So I like to think of habits as almost pathways in your brain. You have these neurons that link up together, and as you repeat different behaviors, you get these different pathways that start. Um, an unusual habit that I have, um, so I'll do a quick introduction. The usual habit I have is like right before this presentation, I put on my lucky shirt and I brush my teeth and I put on some deodorant. Now, obviously the deodorant is not something that is so uh, relevant in this situation, but that's something I do before every time I'm gonna speak. And so to do it again just felt like the right thing to do. My dad has a habit of writing and so uh, when, He's written probably about 11 or 12 books uh, in about six or seven in the last two or three years. So whenever I wanted to write a book, I knew by being with him, I was going to have a much greater chance because he has a habit of writing every single day. So coming back to this, I form these different kind of pathways. Something lights up in the frontal part of my brain where it's like, oh, I'm going to give a presentation. I have to do these couple elements and I start to put on a new shirt, I start to brush my teeth, I start to do all of those things. I kind of think of them as highways in your brain and your, your big habits, like I have a habit of getting something to eat at three o'clock, kind of coffee type. My wife's from the Netherlands and they do coffee type. So I happily go up there and have some coffee or tea or something at that time. So if we look at the middle one, that's probably like my habit. Um, if we look at the little country road on the side, that's probably my exercise habit in the morning. Um, sadly, I don't have as much reinforcement. I don't have as much motivation around that. So that's a, a smaller habit, which I'd like to grow into a, a much bigger habit. Habits take time. So learning new habits take time. We, we kind of think of, um, you know, oh, you know, it shouldn't take that long. And they've done a lot of studies. This was done in uh, England. And basically it showed that it takes about 21 days just to do a simple habit of getting a glass of water and drinking that every morning. If you wanted to take a more complicated task, like doing 50 sit-ups every day, that they found took 84 days. If you're wanting to change the behaviors of people, uh, like someone who's coded in waterfall for 20 years and has been highly rewarded for it, into a new way of doing something where someone's telling them that they're gonna be more effective at it, um, that could take significantly longer. And you wanna get as many tools and you wanna be as efficient about it as possible. And that's what total brain coaching is really about, is shortening that time so that people can learn new habits. Neuroplasticity is that key element in your brain. And I'm gonna turn it over to my dad, who is the neuroscientist, uh, to talk about it in the next couple slides. Dad, are you on mute? Good. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, yes. Yes. Can you hear me now, Ted? Awesome. It's okay. Good. All right. So your brain is incredibly dynamic. Literally everything you do changes your brain. This is a notion of neuroplasticity. The brain can change at any point in your life. It can be something as simple as a few molecules in a membrane, or it can be the establishment of an entire neural circuit, a rewiring of the brain. But whatever you're doing, it will change. If you're playing the guitar, you can look at a particular area of the brain, and immediately you'll see that that area is getting thicker. There are more neural connections to that area. So this is something we find is a very key thing in life, that experience changes the brain. Ted, you could move up a couple slides there. And therefore are very often formed at an early part of our childhood. We learn things, we repeat them, and they become these huge wired pathways in our brain. So as parents, it's huge what we do to our children. Um, these pathways are there for the rest of your life, and they shape our behavior. So next slide. Unfortunately for many of us, it's an addiction to stress. We live in this world where a lot of activity is going on, we're moving things quickly, and we get a kind of an addiction to stress where that experience excites us, we start to turn on this fight or flight response, increased levels of cortisol, the stress hormone throughout our body. One little area of our brain, the amygdala, is so vital, next slide, is so vital to how we interpret whether something is stressful or not. This one area, information can come in, it can go to the frontal parts of our brain where we can make clear, coherent decisions, or it can go to the amygdala where we short circuit the rest of the brain and just turn on the stress response. And for many people, this is one of the biggest obstacles in being coached and getting things done at companies. This threat response is huge for stopping communication, stopping teamwork, stopping a company from moving forward. So the key to really moving ahead is eliminating, first of all, this one habit, which is this addiction to stress and this constant turning on of the threat response. Ted, I can turn it back to you now. Sure, yeah, so these, we have the two kind of books here and we also have our uh, link down below and we'll show the site uh, towards the end of the presentation. What are the seven principles of total brain coaching? And the way that we did this book is we found these large um, principles. So D, discover your energy state. A, harness neuroplasticity in the gut brain axis. Um, A, the power of attention. R, rhythm and resonance. M, uh, feedback matrix. I, improve and integrate. And C, celebration. So these are principles that we talk about. And within each of these principles, there are tools. So we'll first talk about, actually, the first thing we get to do is to do the virtual scavenger hunt. And that will kind of introduce us in a fun way to some of these ideas because they're in the scavenger hunt. And I'm gonna to get to turn this over to Sherman Gomberg, who's uh, uh, head of Scrum Adventures and ran this initially. And uh, we will turn it over to him now. Sherman, can you hear us? Thanks, Ted. Yeah, just finding the mute. <laughs> or the unmute in this case. So thanks, hi everybody. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna run a virtual scavenger hunt. We're gonna use Trello as our tool. So if you've used Trello, great. If you haven't, that's great too. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the seven principles of agile coaching, and you as a group are gonna be randomly assigned to one of these seven principles. Uh, with this new team that you're gonna be formed, you're going to go ahead and have to do a scavenger hunt to answer some of the questions. There's going to be a little checklist uh, in there that you have to go ahead and answer. And uh, Ted, do you have the link that you can share, please, within the chat? Can I think Paul's going to put that up. Awesome. Put that in there, and then I'll share my screen, and I'll show that to you as soon as, uh, as, soon as I have that link. Yeah, it's in there now. And uh, this is a Trello board. We It is uh, kind of... Anonymous, if you click on this, you can get to the board, but in order to edit the board, you'll have to 
someone in your team will have to log into Trello. Hopefully somebody has that or you'll quickly have to, somebody just does an anonymous kind of login. Um, have, have you been able to get in, Sherman? Uh, working on it now. Of course, I got to enter my password. I've had a Trello issue. Trello, Trello and Jira, while they're both by Atlassian, have not been playing well for me. So I will be in in a moment. I have a copy of it if you want me to just share it. Yep, got it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so you guys can see what, uh, what we're taking a look at here. All right, everybody see a Trello board on my screen? Thumbs up if you do, I see some thumbs up. Awesome, thank you very much. All right, so you're going to be assigned to one of these teams, Team Discover, Team Harness, Team Attention, Team Rhythm, Team Feedback Matrix, Team Improvement, or Team Celebrate. As you get into that team, and your teams in Zoom might be numbered Team 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so just associate your team number with the particular uh, principle. So if you're Team 3, for example, you're going to be Team Attention. In that, you click on your card, and you will see a description here and then down below you're going to see a virtual treasure hunt with checklist so you're going to work with your team in order to fulfill this checklist so first thing take a team photo and attach it most interesting habit and so forth so you work with your team there get that information you can drag and drop with trello to put them in here or you can upload whichever one you like and then check your boxes back and when your team is all done, you will exit your Zoom breakout room and come back to the main room. And I believe our, uh, our two authors here uh, probably have some prizes for the winning team. Is that accurate, Ted? Yes. If the, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll have, also, we'll send copies of the books to you. Awesome. All right. So with that, we're going to get started. Uh, our Zoom host. If you can go ahead and send everybody to breakout rooms. And again, I will jump in and out of the breakout rooms to help you if you have Trello issues. And we're going to do a hard stop. It's going to be 10 minutes. So you guys will have 10 minutes. And then we'll, right at 1.15 uh, Central Time, we'll come back. Everyone will come back. Aha. Uh -huh. Did my dad get sent to a room? Uh, <laughs> uh, he's in the no. <laughs> uh, he's, he's in the he's in this room. No, he's perfect here. Okay, for marketing, dad. perfect for finding new solutions. But if you get out of balance, you're anxious and worry. Next one is Pitta, and that's we call the P energy state. Um, you're full of fire, so you can become easily overheated. You can have a strong reaction uh, if you're out of balance. Um, if you don't get your meal on time, watch out. That is one of the worst stimulators uh, for Pitta, and it can send you off into irritability and even anger. You're really good at physical activity. You have a strong appetite, good sleeper. You don't need as sleep or don't need as much as others. Clear and precise speech, but again, you can become irritable under stress. Next slide. Um, and this is the next one is the K type or Kapha, Ted, next slide. Oh, I did, sorry. Should be K type now, Dad. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm looking at the wrong screen. I'm looking at my screen. Um, <laughs> I can get confused here. My Vada kicked in. So K types are much easygoing. They're slower eaters. They fall asleep easily, but they wake up slowly. They're the kids that take a lot longer to get up in the morning. Uh, steady, stable. You don't care if you miss a meal. You can handle that quite easily. But you do have a slower metabolism, so you can gain weight. Um, you're slow to learn, but you never forget. Um, very good physical strength and stamina. Uh, you're very thoughtful, but maybe a little slower on expressing things. 
And if you get out of balance, watch out, you can be possessive and stubborn. So in the next slide, these are summarized once again. Um, pretty much everything we said here, but here's a nice a summary. Uh, the V energy person, key to them is good routine. Um, and next one, the P energy person, uh, sharp intellect, gold oriented. Again, key to them is eating on time, not getting overheated. Finally, the K energy. Um, once again, steady, kind, but don't want to get out of balance because uh, that can be lead to lethargy. You've got to get off the couch and be active. So next slide. So what does it do when you know these things? Well, it helps you to harness your neuroplasticity and gut-brain axis. Next slide. Um, if you have a bad habit, we don't try to change it. No effort there. What we try to do is create a new habit. And what will happen is the brain is a use it or lose it. So you get a new neural circuit, the old ones just fade away. Rewiring the brain is the key to changing habits. Next slide. Um, there are some super habits. Uh, for some people, it could be meditation. For another person, it could be jogging. For another, it could be yoga. Um, all kinds of wonderful habits, and you lock into them. Just that one neural circuit you create in the brain, and it allows all others to fall in place. Next slide. And it turns out it's not just the brain, but the brain is connected to this very interesting circuit nervous system, endocrine, immune, uh, the nervous system of the gut and the endocrine system of the gut, and believe it or not, your gut bacteria, hugely important now. It can affect how you respond to stress, so many different things, it can, it can change. Um, so we take that into consideration also. Next slide. So this is uh, one of the key things. You look at all the habit change books like Tiny Habits, Atomic Habits, they always say, start small, start in doable steps. We have a whole scheme here, um, which is very similar to the other ones, but we do it from the point of view of your uh, energy state. Next slide. Finding your inner rhythm, key concept. If you know who you are, much easier. Everybody has a different sense of time. Some people it's going quick, some people very slow. So you figure out who you are it's much easier if you pick a habit that fits your energy state. You pick a habit in that category, no problem changing it. Much easier than picking something out of your realm. Next slide. Ted, why don't you go to this? Sure, yeah. So we, we've kind of talked about one, you have to discover the first principle, know yourself. Then you need to figure out which habits you're going to change. The reason why also it's called total brain coaching is because that gut brain axis is not something that people take into consideration a lot of times when they're changing their habits. Um, we talked about attention. We talked about rhythm. This is in terms of changing habits. The key word is repetition uh, is reinforcement. And so in this, the, the principle centers around four different techniques of reinforcement. One is self coaching. So like journaling, um, or one of your apps on your phones. Uh, having a personal coach is a great source of reinforcement. Um, being part of a group like this, I'm a lifelong gamer. And by coming to this um, conference, I'm actually strengthening that within me. I'm much more likely to be using games. I've created games, uh, gamifications for DevOps things and, and different things like that. I had a lot of epiphanies about that even this morning, just because I'm with everyone here in this kind of gaming community. The actual, um, one of the most important two is environmental coaching. And we see that in Agile when we co-locate, which we're not able to do right now. We're learning all these great habits of um, co-locating virtually through all these different uh, exercises we're doing. But it turns out if you want to change your habits, you want to make sure you uh, reinforce that by changing your environment. For instance, if you want to stop snacking, take snacks out of your house very simple on that level. Um, so we have these kind of different feedback loops and these are key in terms of changing habits. Games are really good at some of these feedback loops. One of the best things I've done recently in the dojo that I'm working in, the Agile Dojo, is to play a three minute video game over 
cooked too. And that reinforced a lot of agile lessons very quickly. So that's part of environmental coaching also. We also have the sixth principle is continuous improvement and integration. And this is really everything agile. So it, we don't have to go too deep into this, but rapid feedback helps facilitate improvement and integration. And we know this, but that is the key. Uh, also in the dojo that I work in, we do hyper sprints. So we go from two week sprints to two day sprints or three day sprints. And those two, three day sprints, really you get all these feedback loops going even faster with retros every two days, demos every two days, things like that. And the last one is celebrate. It's super important and something that a lot of times we pass over. Um, celebrate when you get a win. And if you break your habits down into tiny little pieces and you celebrate every time, that will reinforce it. I, I had a habit I was trying to build of exercise and a morning routine. And every time I did that, I would, in this isolated situation, I would go quickly and run around my uh, little uh, garden house over there and, so, and shout and say, yeah, I'm number one, and clap. And it seemed really silly, but it helped build the habits that I really wanted to. Um, teams do it with gongs or with chomps or all sorts of cool things. Dad, do you want to talk about the... Why don't you, why don't you skip that and go to your board because you're kind of running out of time. Okay, good, good call. So. What happens is we have these seven different principles and under each of those principles in the book you'll see and on the website, there are tools. So a tool that's under the principle of discover yourself is the VPK um, quiz or a tool under say the feedback matrix is journaling. So we create protocols and test them. The whole idea behind total brain coaching, it's a nonprofit. We want to test as many of these protocols that we can and get people to learn them so that we can find out how we can help people learn habits quicker and more effectively. So this is an example. There are eight different tools made up of the seven different principles. The first tool is the VPK. So we, uh, this you is might want to just uh, yeah. we didn't go over what the, the numbers meant. So you might just want to, they all did the numbers, they added them up, but they might not know what they mean. You want to, you want to touch on that? Now, well, just, you know, you, calculated your you know how many points you had for p how many you had for k how many you had for v so the big the one that has the most points is obviously your predominant but very often people are two or they're very close to two so somebody can be a vp that means they're very imaginative but they're very purposeful very goal oriented you can be a pk that's those are often administrators who are a little more calm but they're also goal oriented and then you can have a rare example where all three numbers are the same and that's quite an interesting person having all those abilities so that's all i wanted to say uh, cool yeah yeah so uh, go ahead okay good so so basically we took the score and the habit i wanted to change is i wanted to lose 10 to 15 pounds or the the person who we're talking about wanted to lose 10 or 15 pounds. And uh, so we understood who we, the person was. And, and because we knew their VPK, we knew what would work with them better or worse. And we, we also, when this person was coached, we also knew the coach's VPK. And so there's an interaction between the coach and the coachee also with that. Um, we did, we figured out which habit we wanted to change. And we came up with through two, that step two, we wanted to stop snacking. Uh, and so we came up through another tool we had, which was the power of attention. The person focuses on each meal and puts the fork down every time they take a bite so that they enjoy the food more. And whenever they felt like snacking, they would drink some warm water. Um, we had a step four and that was using this principle so it points back to it. We also had for rhythms and routines, we wanted them to do a little bit better sleep, more meditation, eat more blueberries, which help neuroplasticity for this person in particular, and reading a book, which also can be helpful. And for the feedback loops, we had four different things. We journaled, the person journaled, there was a coach that you would meet with every week, um, and the wife was also helping, the family was helping, and 
we removed snack foods from that person's um, house. And so you can see the weight going down. These are sort of uh, weekly, or those are, yeah, actually daily measures. And the goal to celebrate was a weekend retreat at a certain place with, with the wife if they achieved the goal by a certain time, which they did achieve, so it was good. So that's how you can see we have those seven principles. They can be pretty abstract, but we have tools under each of those principles. We build a protocol, and we've tested this type of protocol with different people. Um, and you can see that on the website. I'll go to the website real quick just so you can see it. So this is what the website is. We have a counter. Um, we're trying to help a million people make uh, positive change in their life. Um, and we count every time somebody buys a book or somebody's in a course or somebody gets coached and, and turns in their protocol. So that's where we're at. Uh, these were the two books that came out. And we have a lot of information, just like we spoke through. So you guys will be able to go to this site and look at this, because I know we're talking through it pretty quickly. <laughs> There's a better uh, and even more in-depth energy state quiz here. So you can click on that link. It'll take you through the whole thing. And you'll get even a, for the visual people, it'll give you a, almost an animal avatar of your, <laughs> of your uh, energy state. This is another article. Really, your neuroplasticity is your superpower. You have the ability to structure your own reality, your own brain. That is everybody's superpower. And uh, we want to use it. And we want to be as most efficient as we can. This was the protocol that we talked about. And as you can see, if we go to coaching, um, let's see if this pulls up to the right. Oh, that's that one. Sorry. I'll just click on coaching. This will give me, you'll see there's some people that have, we've gotten some results. So we put a protocol chart up. I have a number of other ones that I have to put up too. Um, so the protocol one that I showed you, here are some of the results that people are putting up uh, and how long did it take to establish a habit. So the idea is to create a whole wealth of knowledge so that as coaches, you can come here, you can look, you can try different protocols. I think that's pretty much it, Dad, do you, are there other points that we need to hit? Or Let's should make we? some questions. Yeah, questions. So if you have questions for the presenters, go ahead and type them in the chat so that they can see them there and figure out uh, how to answer them best. Everyone um, got the idea of what the, how did the scores go and um, when we say, you know, Vada is air, that's kind of a very simplified. I mean, Vada is super creative, super imaginative, um, very, very, I mean, air or wind is a kind of the fundamental idea they use, but it's a lot more than that. Um, the, it, it controls Vada in the nervous system, in the body, it controls the nervous system, controls so many different things, all transportation, all movement in the body. Pitta controls all metabolism, all digestion, and kapha is kind of the structure of the body, the bones, the fluids. So they talk about these as kind of primordial energies, and then how they're displayed in your life. Um, you know, you're born with a certain combination of prakriti, but then that can get out of balance. It's sort of like I'm born with a set of genes, but environmental factors like food, exercise, exercise can change how those genes are expressed. And at any given time, I can have a different set of genes that are expressed. Um, so, you know, you take something like COVID, okay? Here's a, here's a serious example of it. Um, I saw a study once where they did 17 people, they injected them with an influenza A virus. And then they looked to see how people reacted. Nine of the people had all the normal stuff. You look at the genes, they turned on in a very sequential way. After this day, this gene turned on, uh, interleukin-6 goes up, they have symptoms, they're sniffling, aching, temperature. Okay, completely normal. The other eight people, completely different. No, hardly any response at all. Hardly any symptoms at all. Minor. You look at the genes, they actually down-regulate the immune system, meaning they actually shut off some of these genes totally different genetic expression. So how do you explain that? Well, 
Western medicine has no explanation. In Ayurveda, you might say, okay, this group were probably the ones that were fighting the thing so quickly might have been pittas. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Maybe their inflammatory system was set much higher, so the virus never even got in there. When the virus came in, they just shut things down. They didn't want to go into the so-called cytokine storm. The others, vada, kaphas, even the blends, maybe they just went through the normal sequencing. It's a huge area that we have to do research on and discover, but it has enormous implications in our own life. Taking a few systems can help us much better in terms of how we live our life and how we adapt new habits. Thanks, uh, that's awesome. Uh, are, where, is there a time check? How are we doing? We've seven got uh, minutes. seven minutes. Okay, awesome. So great. We 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 went th through that one pretty quick. <laughs> we did. We did. Chad, there's a couple of questions in the chat. Do you want to read them in the chat, or do you want me to read them to you? Would you read them? That'd be great. I'm, I'm having sure. Fun. So here's one question. How would you recommend people grow their skills in using total brain coaching? Ooh, good thing. Dad, you want to answer, or you want me? Sure. To yeah. I mean the. You know, the reality of life is a lot of this is common sense. We all, you know, do new things all the time. And if we're a PITA person, a P energy person, it's pretty easy. We have a good sense of discipline. We move right into it. Most habit books are written by P energy people for P energy people, <laughs> you know, and they all have a great time setting new goals and achieving them quickly. If you're a V or a K or any kind of a combination, it's useful to know a little bit about it. And the skills that you need to acquire, they're not very much. The key to changing habits is actually starting small. Don't have any skills at all. That's basically the, as innocent as you are, that's the best approach. Just start very, very small. And you know we go through some very simplistic things to do, depending on your energy type and repeat it. I mean, you know, if you, uh, you know, the book Tiny Habits, a big popular book right now, New York's best time seller list. What does he have people do? After you brush your teeth, floss one tooth. Sounds, what? What is this guy? Is he real? Yeah, he's a Stanford psychologist. He's telling everybody what to do now. And people just have to start small. He says, hey, if you want extra credit, do another tooth, do another tooth. And after a few weeks, everybody's flossing all over the place. So not, not doesn't require skill. It just requires a methodology that works, really. If you get a super habit, you learn meditation. I love transcendental meditation. Some people like other ones. That really helps because that sort of gets everything going, allows you to kind of make changes much more quickly. We've got time for one more question, and there is one more in the chat, which is, uh, during a big organizational change initiative, how do you use those seven principles? Oh, good one. Yeah, so so we were trying, obviously, and uh, we have different people that are working. Um, what we found is it's really important to align the organizational goals, the team goals, and the individual goals. And so once you know, actually, okay, it does take a lot of reinforcement and repetition um, to change habits, that has to play out at all three of those levels. So you have to figure out organizations, so the different companies that I've worked on, um, you can see that sometimes they want, um, they want everything to be right when it comes out, more than they want this quick to market kind of space. And then they're, they get everything right, but then they don't get quickly to market. So they try to, they, we want our agile transformation. But they have to understand that they have to do these small experiments and not these kind of big bang experiments. So that overall organizational habit will have a big effect on the team I have, will have a big effect on the individual. And what we've done so far is we're trying to align the individual habits and goals with the team habits and goals with the organizational habits and goals. So for ag organizational change, organizations have memory. They're almost like people. To be honest, they're almost like humans. And then you can kind of, when you're coaching a company, so it's almost like coaching a person, you know? And so a lot of these principles can be applied at all of those different levels. And 
we don't have any magic bullet. The main thing is trying to figure out little shortcuts and little more efficiencies and how to move this big, huge person, as you will, into the right direction that management thinks it wants to go, even though it's doing all, well, I won't do that. There's no system that's broken. There's only starting where you're at and improving. I don't know if that answered the question, but that's, that's my um, the, the book, one of the books is kind of a business oh, table. One. It's called The Coherence Code, and it's a story of a company. You know, it's sort of like the unicorn or um, any of those, uh, the Phoenix Project. I must say we're inspired by those. Those are quite brilliant books. Um, and so it's much simpler, but it has that same notion of um, what do you what do you look at when you go into a company? How do you do it? And so it goes through all the layers and it's a story. It's a fun story. And it then the the other book, Total Brain Coaching, are really the how-to for the coherence code, which is the story of what might happen in a company if you were to apply it. So the, they give you kind of two sides to the story. And coherence is huge. It's an abstract principle, a principle in physics. But when you have cracks in coherence, when people are fighting, when they're threatened, when you've got all these neurotransmitters that are shooting up, they just kind of blind you and they stop the brain from working well and you don't get, you get very little progress. So you have to change the brain. The only way you're gonna change behavior is by changing the brain. And once you change the behavior, then you have a chance of creating coherence in the team and in the company. Thank you very much, Dr. Wallace, Ted, and Sherwin. It was an excellent talk. Um, it helps us understand that um, changing organiza organization change management, agile is a subpart of it, is a lot of it about changing the brain, changing the habits, changing the ways, and how we have to go about it. I really appreciate and thank you from on behalf of all the participants here for giving us this wonderful talk. Thank you. Um, so this is a time for another 10 minute break. We are going to quickly take a break and come back. Uh, while you do the breaks, just want to inform you that we have been recording these sessions. These sessions will not be available for the participants. They are for the purpose of the speakers and for them to help understand and improve or go and, and uh, present it out later on. So they will be there. We will be having games uh, because we did tell you that there will be a games passport. So you will have access on our website on all the games. And at this time, uh, I have been told we welcome from you. If you have your games that you would like to share, please send it out to Ruchika and Matt, and we will get them added to our website with credits to you. Thank you. With that, we start a 10 minute timer and have a great break.